colleague, uh, co-president uh, Nigel Farage, Freedom and Democracy. Mr Chairman, thank you. I have often asked myself the question, why would a successful country that has enjoyed a thousand years of independence give up its right of self-government to the unelected non-entities that we see sitting before us this morning? And the answer that comes back from the Foreign Office and the great of the good is that we must have influence in Europe. We must have a seat at top table and we can change things. And we have done our best to prove what good Europeans we are. We go on paying you £50 million a day. We have helped the Euro bailout fund, even though we did not join the currency, thank goodness. We have given you 80% of the fish stocks that swim in our waters. Your fleets can come and take that from us. And we have applied every directive you have given us absolutely to the letter, all of it to gain influence. In fact, Nick Clegg is so deluded, he still thinks we can take the lead in Europe. When a British Prime Minister goes to a summit with a very modest proposal to protect a uniquely important British industry, a snarling President Sarkozy tells him where to go, with German approval of course, and we find ourselves without a friend in the room, some influence. Well, you've decided to head off on the Titanic towards economic and democratic disaster, and we're now in a lifeboat outside the Titanic, but we're threatened by a bow wave that is going to come and engulf us if we're not careful, and it's retribution. And we've heard the language of retribution this morning. Financial markets legislation is going to be imposed upon Britain, and we will have no influence whatsoever over any of it. Something changed, though, on Friday. Mr Cameron may not know it, but we are on now on course. Britain is going to make the great escape. We're going to get out of this union. We'll be the first European country to get our freedom back. I suspect many others will follow. And then what we'll have is our democracy back, our liberty back, and we'll have influence in the world as you lot head for disaster. It is going to happen. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. President Farage, blue card, blue card to you, yeah? Uh, colleague Smith, blue card. Thank you very much, Mr. I'm uh, uh, grateful to the member for uh, taking an intervention. Uh, given that uh, the actions the very selfish actions of uh, Prime Minister David Cameron in uh, uniquely achieving nothing for the one square mile of the 86,000 square miles of the United Kingdom has achieved nothing but actually undermined the 26 other member states trying to solve this crisis. Would you agree with me that uh, Prime Minister Cameron may well have made a couple of people in his party happy, may well have made a couple of people in your party happy? But given that he did not speak on behalf of the Labour Party, the Greens, the Liberals, well, not all of the Liberals anyway, he certainly did not speak on behalf of the people of Scotland with one representative at the Westminster Parliament from my country. He certainly did not speak Thank on behalf you, of the Khalid. aspirations of the Scottish Parliament. Would he agree Thank with you. me that if you do achieve your aim, which Thank he has you, facilitated, Khalid. that the United Kingdom does leave this place, that the people of Scotland would do considerably better representing ourselves, free from London rule, as part of this family of nations? Thank Thank you, colleague, uh, could you ask you? Yeah. Well, I have to say that is a very difficult question to answer because there were half a dozen of them thrown in there. Um, but David Cameron did what he had to do. He was forced into an impossible position. But you are right. He has gained no concessions whatsoever and he has actually left the United Kingdom now even more vulnerable than it was before. We are in a permanent voting minority. We simply have not got a friend in the room and we have heard this morning they want to have our rebate, they want financial markets legislation. But what he has done, he has opened up a debate in Britain. The European debate has now started in earnest. Cameron does not know what he has unleashed. I think the momentum for us to have a referendum to divorce ourselves from these failing structures and to replace it with a genuine free trade agreement now has an unstoppable momentum and that is good for the UK and it's good for Scotland and it'll be good for your financial sector based in Edinburgh Thank you, which provides colleague. many, many jobs for Scotland. Thank you very people. much. Uh, the next speaker, Madame